usually we examine the cardiovascular system either right before or right after the respiratory system. They're sort of linked. They're right next to one another. So that's what we're going to do now. Yeah, a lot of times a client calls you uh, for a cardiovascular problem or a perceived cardiovascular problem because they maybe notice some exercise intolerance on the horse. Perhaps it's severe enough that there's actually some edema, uh, dependent edema on the legs, on the belly, on the horse. So our first step, like always, we sort of stand back, we look at the horse, and we make some observations. To demonstrate things on the cardiovascular system, we've changed patients because Christy here has a great lean body mass. She's a little bit easier to demonstrate some of the anatomy on than the horse we were using for the respiratory system. Just like we always do, we're going to start from front to back. And I want to take a look here at Christy's face. I want to take a look at her mucous membranes. Again, we're looking at perfusion, looking to see she's nice and pink, looking for capillary refill time, blanching, one, two. That's nice and normal. I'm going to take a look, maybe take a feel of her mandibular artery right here. You're going to have to feel that. You won't be able to see me doing it, but you can see me rolling my finger back and forth in order to get the position there. As I come back, I'm going to take a look at her jugular furrow. Christy's got a real nice jugular furrow here. You can see that indentation going vertically right here. If I include her jugular, you're going to see her jugular vein fill just like that, nice and full there. And if I bounce my finger on it, you can actually see a little fluid wave. She has jugular veins on both sides of the neck, the right and the left. It would be important to look at both jugulars and make sure they're patent. Sometimes in response to an intravenous injection that's gone slightly out of the vein, you can get a thrombosis that will include the jugular. We're also looking for pulses coming up the jugular or possibly a carotid pulse from behind the jugular. The carotid vein runs parallel to the jugular, just deeper to it. In order to do a good job of scalding the heart, you need to understand the landmarks and where things are located that you're going to be listening for. Dr. Hamill is going to demonstrate the intercostal spaces so that you can count your way up forward in order to put yourself over the valves of the heart. Okay, so we're starting here at the 17th intercostal space. So we've got 17, 16, 15, Gonna go on up like that. And where you're gonna to need to end up is the first valve that you're gonna be listening to over the pulmonic valve, which is the furthest cranial, is at about the third intercostal space. Christy's really cooperating well. She's got her left front foot forward because the third intercostal space is pretty far forward. There we are, right up here at the level of the elbow, way, way yeah. up forward. Mm -hmm. And your back, your aortic one valve is located just a little bit higher than the level of the elbow in the fourth intercostal space, so about there, plus or minus. This is going to vary with your force. And the mitral is another intercostal space back, just about here. Probably the most important thing I can convey to you is that when you're trying to listen to the horse's heart, you're going to be wedging that stethoscope so far forward up underneath that muscle here in their elbow. You're sort of not going to believe it. But she has her leg for, far forward now, so to, she's doing a nice demonstration on this. But if that's about how you're going to be yeah, positioned. That's right. Way up there. Once you put your stethoscope on, sort of take a deep breath. Try and sort out the difference between the respiratory sounds and your cardiac sounds. And understand that just by putting your stethoscope on the horse's chest, a lot of times you'll actually cause their heart rate to go up for a minute. So you have to relax, let them relax, before you get back down to a normal rate. Let's not forget the right side of the horse. In order to listen to the tricuspid valve, you're going to need to move over to the right-hand side. And there are significant murmurs associated with the tricuspid valve. Tricuspid valve is just above the level of the elbow, nice and far forward again in the armpit. I want to show you a more normal position when you're actually scalding a horse's heart as opposed to when you're demonstrating an auscultation. I stand close to the horse. I stand nice and parallel to the horse so that I can you know, relax and take a moment and listen. What are you listening for, Barbara? Well, first thing I'm going to do is get a rate. Uh, horses' heart rates are very variable. We like to listen for... 10 or 15 seconds and then do the multiplier out to the minute. Next thing I'm listening for is the rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, 
make sure and they have normal rhythm. Right, and then the quality of that rhythm or that rate, because mm -hmm. we see lots of murmurs in horses, don't we? That's, you know, horses are so different than small animals because they have that large heart. So you have a lot of sounds associated with just the volume and the flow mm -hmm. of all that blood going through those big ventricles, auricles. Right, and because the uh, rate is when we walk up to the horse and we're listening, it might be 38, 40 beats per minute. And so you actually have a time between the beats that you hear the murmurs, whereas with the small animals, they're going so fast that it's hard for me sometimes to pick up the, the, the swooshes. But you can certainly do that with the horses. So they have a lot of these physiological murmurs that you have to become aware of. And it's important that you listen to a lot of horses, know what the normal sounds are, the variety of normal sounds, so that you can start to pick up the abnormal sounds. All right, now what we're trying to do here is that Dr. Forney is listening to Max's heart, and we have one earpiece with one of our microphones uh, attached to that. So hopefully you're able to hear the heartbeat of Max. Uh, I think he's going about 55 beats per minute here, but you'll be able to get the sound, so just listen. We have a lot of ancillary types of uh, studies that we can do on, on cardiovascular system in the horse, just like with humans. Um, and we're getting more all the time. It's mm -hmm. really you know, getting very high tech. But we have the old standard electrocardiogram, or EKG, which is going to show us what the rate is, what um, the rhythm is, and gives you some information on the conduction uh, going through the, the heart muscle itself. And of course, we use ultrasound and Doppler, just like you do in small animals or in humans. Look at uh, the flow, the blood flow, the presence of abnormal fluids, uh, you know, patency of valves, that type of thing. Sure, and that gets very exciting, and we have some very nice systems for doing that. And we'll get on to things like the uh, MRIs and the CAT scans and so on. They'll, they'll soon have them with the, for the horses, too. Uh, we're sure of it, but it makes it a lot of fun very exciting for us. I think one of the things that we do in horses that you won't see them doing in small animals is the exercise stress test and the t radio telemetry. Right, and, and the work on the treadmill. Yeah, yeah. That that's because exercise is such an important what the horse does for us that uh, we've devised a lot of ways now to, to uh, help that capture the information off of that, those exercise uh, exams. Great. Let's go on to the next system. <laughs> 